Hey guys, it's been a little while and I wasn't really sure what to film, but today we're actually using a new feature on our Anatole Volt that we hadn't had to use before. And one of the like really cool features that Anatole has is cycle mode. And we are going to be using cycle mode because Eduardo forgot to tell Richard the sequence of this multiple color design. So that gives us a really good opportunity to go ahead and try to use this feature. So Richard's gonna kind of walk you through what you have to do. If you wanna go ahead and explain what you're pressing on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have yellow on five, but the red and blue needs to go before the yellow. So we're gonna go to cycle mode. So this is cycle one. We're gonna do the white on one, uh, the blue on seven, and the red on eight. And then for cycle two, we're gonna go to five, and then we're gonna add the yellow. So after the first cycle, then it'll put the yellow on the second round. And I wanted to go ahead and mention that cycle mode works pretty well when you don't have a large quantity amount of shirts. Um, I believe this particular job has, what, about 24, about 24 pieces, so it is going to be a pretty quick job, but you will notice that due to having to like go around twice, it will take a little bit more time than you normally would if you appropriately did the correct sequence of the print job to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around, I'm going to go ahead and film a little bit of him using cycle mode, and sorry I haven't posted much, but we haven't really had too much going on at the shop just been pretty busy so oh I actually only caught the test print on the second time around but the very first cycle it did white which is on head one it flashed we used the roller squeegee and now you can see that's printing yellow which is actually from the second cycle so then it came over here and it had already printed the red and the blue and then it looped back around to print the yellow on that second cycle so this is just the test print and the machine notifies you that it's done so this was the test print and so we're docking through this right now. You can see that this is half tones and this is half tones as well. Um, actually right here also with the red and the yellow because we're trying to minimize the amount of colors we're using. We're trying to create orange with the half tones and create green with the half tones. So everything originally was um, two passes of white for the base and we did one pass of everything else. So our next test print is gonna be two passes of blue to also kind of brighten this up as well and two passes of red. Cause you can actually see where the pressure wasn't quite good enough, but this is absolutely the very first test print. So this is why we do test prints and also for us to sit here and talk it through. Okay, so I finally caught it, the very first test print. We used the roller squeegee from Action Engineering, so there was two passes of white. We flashed. And we recently just started implementing this tool. It's been pretty great, so you can actually see that it's not really, really majorly vibrant, which we just really needed to be nice and smooth. And now the red is going to go, and he changed this to two passes of red. No, it didn't do two passes. <laughs> so cycle mode is new to us, and so we changed the imprints on the screen, but Richard realized that you actually have to go in, so like there it says two passes, but you actually have to go into cycle mode and manually change it. So it didn't do two passes that first time, and we all caught that, so as you guys also saw. So now he's just gonna go back again and print just one pass of red and one additional pass of blue. So now it will have two passes on red and two passes on blue. So now it's going to go to the second cycle, which it's only going to print yellow. And he's probably manually going to have to change that because since we had to do so many 
corrections, it's not going to probably think it's still in the second cycle and it probably doesn't know to go all the way around. So this is definitely trial and error because this is a feature we have not really messed with because we've always had the two flashes. So we've barely really ever had a need to run cycle mode. And we also try to discuss sequences prior to printing a big multicolor job, which also helps eliminate having to use cycle mode. So this is all new for us. So wanted to share with you guys. So this is the second test print. You can see that we are having a little bit of issues with that yellow ink. You can see that the yellow on the half tones isn't quite coming through, especially on this blue one here. And you can see there was some pull up. So we're actually gonna add some reducer to this um, Max Opaque ink that we have from Union Ink. We're using Max Opaque? Yeah. Gonna yeah. So he's actually gonna go ahead and change to Ultra Soft instead. I thought originally we were gonna add reducer, but he's gonna pull this Max Opaque ink and change to Ultra Soft ink instead. And just because that way more, the ink is really thick right now and it's not clearing the screen, which is a problem. So we're gonna come back in a little bit and do another test print. So that will be test print number three. This is test print number two. So you can see Richard is taking out all the old ink. You can also see Alexis here. Hello, ma'am. So he's taking out the old ink just because like I had mentioned, it was really thick and he's going to be switching to a ultra soft ink instead, still from Union Ink, still the same color, but hopefully that should help um, ensure that the ink is gonna go through the screen. As you can see the colors that he's using right now. Anybody who works in this industry, you already know ink is messy. You can already see he's got yellow on his shirt today. Look at that, boom. Boom. So they're gonna come grab me whenever he goes to do the next test print, but. So you can see Richard is taking out all the old ink. You can also see Alexis here. Hello, ma'am. So he's taking out the old ink just because like I had mentioned, it was really thick and he's going to be switching to a ultra soft ink instead, still from Union Ink, still the same color, but hopefully that should help um, ensure that the ink is gonna go through the screen. As you can see the colors that he's using right now. Anybody who works in this industry, you already know ink is messy. You can already see he's got yellow on his shirt today. Look at that, boom. Boom. So they're gonna come grab me whenever he goes to do the next test print, but. All right, we're gonna go check on Richard because he's probably done changing out ink and he's doing another test print. So this will be test print three, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's on the first cycle right now, so it's going to skip yellow. It's gonna go ahead and do two passes of red, hopefully this time. And then follow up with two passes of blue. Now it's gonna go ahead and loop around for that second cycle. And we're not really sure why, but it does flood the white. And you can see it's gonna go all the way around. It does flash. It's gonna flash before it comes back to the yellow. So we're not doing wet on wet with the yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it around and we're gonna look at the test. So we're not crazy happy with the third test print either, mostly because again, we're still having some problems with the yellow coming through, mostly on the top here. 
the bottom we actually did two passes of yellow we ended up following up with another one just to see to help push the ink through and you can see it's still not quite there and then but with two passes of yellow it's way too prominent here at the bottom but you can kind of see that the blue with the yellow half tones are turning green and then that got overly flooded um, so we're gonna go do an, a fourth test print um, he did adjust you said the the squeegee flood correct yeah, the index. so he adjusted the squeegee index to come up a little bit higher just in case it wasn't catching you know a similar pressure all the way up so we're gonna go and do a fourth test print and hopefully that will be good okay yeah it was the screen it was the screen so all right we're back from lunch we're back from taking a break we ended up adding a green screen because we thought there was just complications with the half tones but it turns out we ended up having to re-burn the yellow screen most likely due to um, you know whenever we went to go spray it out or spraying out all the emulsion or maybe it didn't get degreased properly there was a lot of buildup in the screen and not permitting all of the yellow ink to go through but now we're done this is the fifth test print so everything looks Good. We still have the half tones on the red and yellow here to make the orange. We use the green screen, so we are done, set, and ready to pretty much start production from here. So a little bit of trial and error. We are still using the cycle mode, which was the key purpose of this video. Um, so he's going to let pallets warm up and then begin production. All right, so Richard is starting in production. There's approximately about 24 pieces. And if you were not going to use cycle mode, Richard, approximately how long would it, do you say that it would take you to print a four, now five color imprint job? Um, without setup, just running it, a 20 color job would take me about like five minutes or so. But cycling it, it's gonna about double the time. Um, so it's gonna take about 10 minutes or so, cause there's not that many shirts. No, so our machine is not a lot of pallets but our minimum is 24 pieces so he is obviously getting those all loaded so literally by the time he gets everything loaded and does the first cycle um, you know the second cycle will be starting up and then if we actually had a big order he was explaining that at one of his old shops that while the second cycle was running he would actually run to the foot of the dryer and stack shirts in the meantime so that kind of explains that if you are a one-man team, that cycle mode might be a little bit better for you if you're needing to stack and look for pinholes or, you know, you're having a little bit more of a technical job. But on our machine, normally we would just run this in a certain sequence where we would not have to stop or run the cycle mode, run the second cycle, really. So if we weren't running our second cycle or running cycle mode, we would have already have done white, um, most likely yellow and then red. So that way they could do kind of like a wet on wet and flash and then do the two darker colors afterwards. So as you can see, they're finally at the red and blue head right now and he's finished loading um, the last shirt. And now it's still got to go around again. Whereas normally, if we actually ran this in the appropriate sequence, we would be pulling the shirts off and already running them through the dryer. So as you can see, there's not actually anything he can do right this minute, except wait for the shirts to go all the way around again. So again, if you're a one-man team, you're having to open some shirts out of boxes, or if he was already done and was running shirts you know, to the dryer, then cycle mode is ideal. But for us, when we have multiple employees and availability, this actually is you know, him essentially not producing as quickly as he normally would. And you don't really quite know, I'm sure if I was looking at the screen, obviously, you'd be able to tell 
what part they're at. Oh, okay, so that looks like that's the first shirt of the second cycle because I saw yellow go there, but green went ahead and went on that path. So that is the first shirt of the second cycle. And again, you can see that Richard can't really do much of anything just yet because they haven't looped around all the way. not really too much to talk about so I'm sorry that we're just really kind of trying to show you guys what it is like running on cycle mode so there's not really a whole lot to talk about the shops pretty quiet today So this is the first shirt done from the cycle mode. So that all approximately took about five minutes just for the one actual loop around where normally the shirt would have been done in half that amount of time because it would have been finished on the very first pass that had came around. So now he's loading the first shirt of like the next quantity of shirts because from that shirt that he just took off from forward will be complete, which would be, you know, a, a dozen or 10. So that kind of gives you guys a little bit better of an understanding of the time that it does take for the involvement of running cycle mode not only was it a big learning curve for us today but with Richard Eduardo and I we were able to power through it um, solve some problems we obviously had a screen issue as well uh, we were trying to use the half tones which our orange half tones turned out perfect um, after we're done running this job we're actually going to just test it again to see if we are able to make green with the half tones that we had already had originally but at this time we had made a green screen but the whole point was to avoid having to print that additional color and use the half tones so just wanted to show you guys and kind of show the process and how long it kind of takes because it really did take a lot longer than it normally would and so this is the very first one off the press as we said our half tones turned out perfect with that new yellow screen we did end up screen printing the green instead of using a mix of half tones but we are going to try one at the very end and if i'm still able to film i'll show the last one with the half tones that we did but this will be the final product we are printing a sleeve as well so once we get everything done which again this is obviously taking a little bit more time than normal once we get that done we're going to knock out the sleeve <laughs> 